May and June 2013, 11 human rights practitioners from Asia and Africa came to a study tour in Mexico to learn about different human rights experiences. This tour was part of the evidence and lessons from Latin America's project, ELA, a UK aid-funded initiative aiming to promote learning and exchange among practitioners from Latin America, Asia and Africa. This tour was organized by Fundar, a Mexican civil society organization working on human rights and the advancement of substantive democracy. En mayo de 2013 se organizó un study tour con distintos participantes de África y de Asia, principalmente con la finalidad de dar a conocer las experiencias que de alguna manera han sido positivas o exitosas para la sociedad civil, pero también para la defensa, promoción, protección y garantía de los derechos humanos en México. Uh, participants are coming from Nigeria, Togo, Uganda, South, South Africa, and also from Nepal and Pakistan. We have visited different uh, kind of uh, organizations and we've, have, we've had uh, different kinds of activities. The departing point of the ELA study tour was a discussion of the common challenges that Latin American, African and Asian participants share in ensuring the effective realization of human rights in their contexts. We are already in a transition phase because and there there are some ongoing you know like human there are lots of human rights violations you know because of uh, improper laws if there is law they are not been implemented you know and we don't have a I mean constitutional constitution by this time because we already our constitutional assembly has already failed to draft a constitution by time and uh, due to all this there is no I mean, like rule of law policies on on almost every human right issue. But the situation currently is that most of those policies are not fully implemented. Uh, I would say that um, in terms of human rights violation, there's a lot of too much gender-based violence in Uganda. And basically we have policies, for example, like a gender policy. But the problem is these policies are not fully implemented to make sure that these issues are fully addressed. So in developing regions, we face a very challenging situation of human rights. There are four disappearances killings and also we have a serious problem of access to justice and access to justice from the judiciary but also in all levels of government corruption and impunity given these common challenges in the tour participants got the opportunity to know four different mechanisms to protect defend and guarantee human rights The first mechanism participants learned about was the gender units established within Mexico's justice system, which has played a fundamental role in protecting and defending women's rights. Participants met Monica Maxise and Adriana Ortega from this unit. Bueno, el programa de igualdad de género en la Suprema Corte surgió en 2008 y surgió gracias a un presupuesto etiquetado que dio la Cámara de Diputados. Lo que hace la unidad de, de igualdad de género en el interior de la Corte, pues, es esta como doble mandato que se rec que reconoce para sí la unidad de igualdad de género. La necesidad de mejorar los procesos de impartición de justicia y entonces entrenar y capacitar y profesionalizar a jueces, magistrados, eh, secretarios de estudio y cuenta, oficiales, judiciales, para que introduzca la perspectiva de género en las resoluciones y el otro mandato que reconoce que hay que hacer política interna para que las mujeres y para que haya una perspectiva de género en eh, in las, in las political laborales de la Suprema Corte. I can say that here in the Supreme Court I'm very amazed, surprised uh, for the, not only for the building and the history who they are showing us, but for the meeting and how the women, are, um, the gender problem is, is solved and, uh, in, the, in the justice. And I, I mean, in our country we don't have it. We don't have it that in the justice we have, uh, uh, we are trying to put a gender uh, unit. And they very successfully created awareness around gender equality. Using the principle of equality and the right to non-discrimination, they basically um, ran a whole project where they created awareness amongst the judiciary uh, on gender equality. So it was really amazing how they sought to set out to change mindsets 
around the issue of equality uh, when it comes to the issue of gender equality. The second mechanism participants got to know was the Mexico City Human Rights Commission and its role in promoting and guaranteeing human rights in the city. They met Mario Patron, first inspector of the commission, who explained their work in advancing human rights. La Comisión de Derechos Humanos del Distrito Federal forma parte del sistema no jurisdiccional de protección de los derechos humanos. Básicamente su función tiene que ver con recibir quejas sobre actos u omisiones de autoridades que constituya la posible comisión de violaciones a los derechos humanos y finalmente uno de los principales recursos con los que cuentan estas instituciones son las recomendaciones. Sí tiene una suerte de fuerza moral en tanto que hacen un señalamiento directo sobre la posible comisión de violaciones a derechos humanos. We went to the National Commission and there also I found that we have the some some of the problem the commissioners said are shared by our countries and the way they they are trying to to achieve their goals are, are giving me ideas so that when I will go back home I will try uh, because we are in a good uh, mood with uh, our national commission we will try to see how to talk with them and to see how they can manage some things the way it's done in here in Mexico. A third experience participants got to know is the Mexican Victims Law, a legal framework aiming to protect and defend victims' right to redress. They met members from Peace, Justice and Dignity Movement and Fundar's researchers to learn about the process for drafting and enacting this law. Bueno, la ley de víctimas surge en el sexenio, a finales del sexenio de Felipe Calderón. Felipe Calderón llegó al poder en el 2006 y a partir de eso uh, se dispara la violencia en el contexto de lo que Felipe Calderón impulsó como la estrategia de guerra contra la delincuencia organizada. La ley de víctimas, eh, así de manera general, reconoce los derechos de las víctimas y establece los mecanismos para que se garanticen esos derechos de parte del Estado. Entonces, eh, la ley reconoce el derecho de las víctimas a la ayuda inmediata, a la asistencia, a la atención y a la reparación integral del daño, entre otros. ¿no? We don't have law and victim laws in law, you know, like, uh, we are, but we are trying to uh, advocacy and lobby for this as well. So the victim's law was pertinent to me in that if we could replicate this in Uganda, it would be one way of encouraging people who have not yet even come up to open up about these issues. They can come up because the laws yet protect them. The fourth mechanism participants learned about was strategic litigation. They met with Maria Sanchez from Fundar and Ruben Valdez from the National Institute of Respiratory Diseases Patients Committee, who talked about a strategic litigation case on the right to health. Budget analysis was key for putting this case together, as it allowed to identify that budget for patients with HIV had been allocated but not executed, undermining this patient's right to health. Entonces, el litigio estratégico es una herramienta más dentro de este abanico de, de posibilidades que lo que busca es incidir directamente en el cambio de políticas públicas pero a través del Poder Judicial. El Instituto Nacional de Enfermedades Respiratorias es el, el instituto o el hospital que más atiende pacientes que viven con VIH, ubicando que hay violaciones graves al derecho a la salud de los pacientes por falta de infraestructura, fue que promovimos eh, dos acciones. Una fue una queja ante la Comisión Nacional de Derechos Humanos, que fue firmada por varios de los pacientes de, del Instituto Nacional de Enfermedades Respiratorias, y por otro lado promovimos un amparo indirecto que habla sobre violaciones al derecho a la vida, violaciones al derecho a la salud, y a las garantías procesales principales de las que gozamos todos los ciudadanos. When I go back to my country, it's like I can go, or at least I can research what's going on the budgeting things. Is there any organizations working on it or not? The patient's major claim in this lawsuit is that the state is not using the maximum of its available resources to ensure this patient's right to health, uh, and moreover, that the state is not justifying. Uh, 
uh, and this obviously constitutes a violation to the right to health of these patients. Learning about different mechanisms for the protection, promotion and fulfillment of human rights implemented in Mexico was an enriching experience for all study tour participants. Hopefully, what was learned and exchanged will contribute to enhance the various human rights interventions participants are undertaking in their countries. Finally, we hope that the long-lasting friendships and linkages created during the tour will remain over time and will promote a greater South-South dialogue on human rights issues. It's been most um, rich, is what I can say to describe it, because uh, just to learn your perspectives and your ideas, the progress you've made on human rights, um, how civil society is mobilized, um, and then sharing it and having people from other parts of the world uh, engaging on it and hearing different perspectives. It's been most enriching and rewarding and uh, got lots of ideas to go back and incorporate. So it's, thank you, it's been, it's been most amazing.